Hello folks, welcome to the vlog. A little bit of a funny one today. So uh, I intended to capture quite a bit of the brew day. Um, we've actually filled all these tanks up now, all the new tanks are filled, which is a real achievement. So instead of just commissioning them slowly, we really went to town and filled the whole lot, which is a great thing. But unfortunately, um, I didn't manage to get the footage I wanted to because I'm back on this stuff, folks. Yes, I'm an invalid again. So I'm limping because of something that I did on Wednesday. So I ordered this KDO, KD3809 wall clock, as you can see, because it's got time, date, and temperature on it. So when I'm filling out the brew sheet, I can get everything I need, because I need the air temperature, you see, so I can figure out what my hot water wants to be at for the next brew, if the air temperature's at 15 degrees, I know to knock half a degree off on the HLT, so we don't end up adding too much water on the doughing, or overshooting the temp target temperatures. So as I was putting that clock up there, I made the fatal error of kneeling on this stainless steel worktop without any protection on the knee. And it took about 18 to 24 hours for it to flare up, but I've obviously upset the bursa sacs in the knee, and uh, yep, it flared up, and now I'm limping again. So fortunately, I was also going to the doctors yesterday to discuss the results of a recent blood test. They were checking me for gout and some other things, basically ruling all that out. So it looks like my uric acid levels, although they're a little bit on the high side, are fine. It's not gout. It's definitely bursitis. Uh, but like I say, fortunately, I was going for these results when I had the flare up. So. I pestered the doctor for some more naproxen and he was reluctant to give me it in the first instance because apparently it's really bad on your kidneys. Uh, but I said, look, I don't want to be on the stuff, but I've got a brew day to do today and tomorrow. I could do with a little bit of pain relief. So he gave me 28 more pills. That should keep me going. I just need to make sure in the future that I am extremely careful when it comes to kneeling. That's the prime cause. For years and years, while I was in the building trade, I used to install people's windows. And doing the windows in the kitchen, for instance, used to be the worst part. So I'd jump up on the worktops and I'd be knelt on the worktops while sealing or taking out the old windows or tidying up the tiles or whatever I had to do to make the job good again. And all those years of doing that have obviously ruined the bursa sacs in the knee. So it's a real pain in the arse. It's not something that I like. So uh, I've got to make sure that we've got kneeling pads in as many places around the brewery as possible so I don't flare it up anymore. But fortunately today is Friday, so I should have a couple of days to rest it up and be fighting fit again come next week. So let's talk beer. We're transferring, we've made the pale, Harrison's pale today, which used to be called the Jaded Pioneer. Uh, we're transferring at 22.4 degrees, which is ideal. It's hitting the tank at 21.5. So we've obviously got the chiller on and that's helping a little bit. Uh, so we've got five tanks here and that fermenter with the plump water over there all doing quite well. And up there we have the Raspberry Pi clocking the data for all of them. So I've had a lot of people sending me links and everything to the tilt hydrometers website where they have the software or the flash image for an SD card to put on one of those things. Thank you very much everyone 
I've got it and we're up and running and I'm going to actually change that and I'm going to put the the flashed image with the HDMI drivers on so I can take a mini HDMI cable out of the Pi Zero W and run it into the TV monitor which does have an HDMI input but that means I'll only be able to have whatever's on the Pi displayed on the monitor. The other option that I've got is possibly putting another Raspberry Pi in the back of it, in the back of the TV and running Raspbian or something on there and getting <coughs> Android TV and then we'll be able to browse to the IP address of this tilt to get the display that we want and then if we fancy putting something else on like maybe a music video or playing some of my vlogs in here then we can do that on that TV screen I was going to put the TV screen up here where the basketball net is but quite frankly most of the work that I'm going to be doing is down here in this section where this clock is and all this kind of jazz so I'll not be able to see it I'll have to walk out to have a look at the tilt readout so if I have to walk out then I may as well walk out and pick up a tablet right or walk upstairs and log in so if I put it up there then I can see I can see the numbers from wherever I am in the brewery and uh, I think it makes it a bit more convenient so let me hobble up these stairs this is a pain in the arse quite frankly but I do want to show you one more thing here we go so into the office I'm going to pan around check it out folks I only went and bought all eight tilt colours so now we can have a tilt in every single tank and this is what we're going to have on this television screen and that's going to be obviously mounted up over there where we mentioned earlier on so the idea with this is all the tanks here for the brewery this is on our brew management software BMS view plan BMS you can see I've renamed all the fermenters FE1 black FE2 blue FE3 green orange pink purple red yellow and I've done it in that order because that's the order that they come up on the screen so when we're stood in the brewery we can actually just glance up and think tank 5 we know it's pink we know it's tilt pink tank 8 tilt yellow tank 1 tilt black and we know what the readings are we know what the temperature is we can correlate the temperature to the temperature that we see on the STC 1000s and yes I know if I took this and I put it into brew pie then I'd also be able to control the temperature from home by wiring the STCs or at least the motorized valves via a relay and the GUIO pinouts on the Raspberry Pi to turn the tanks to cool or to heat uh, but I'm not going to do that I actually prefer to come here and cast my eye over everything I don't want it to become automated is what I'm saying but I do like a little bit of technology in the mix so there we go folks I am all pied out for the week I'm gonna wrap up anyway I'm struggling with the knee hobbling around and I haven't really got much uh, much else to talk about one thing I do want to comment on though I'm really having second thoughts on putting plums in this plum porter believe it or not that is because I've done a little bit more reading up and it doesn't seem that anybody's made a successful plum porter by actually using fruit in fact it's basically ruined the batch of beer or made it barely drinkable so with that in mind I might just take a small amount of the beer and put it on fruit maybe a gallon put it in a demijohn or something like that and then the rest of it will have as a standalone porter and then the other half of it will be flavored maybe different amounts of flavoring to see which is the best flavor point 
but we'll be putting the Uncle Roy's plum flavouring in there to see which is the best. Anyway, the camera's getting heavy, folks, so I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I hope all that makes sense to you. I'll be all right after the weekend, I'm sure. I've got my naprox in. I'll be resting up. Don't worry about me. Have a good weekend. Watch some fantastic YouTube videos, and we'll see you back here again. Maybe Monday. Cheers.